Before we get started, I just wanted to officially announce I'm going to be hosting a tournament for the new Age of Sigmar, RTS, Realms of Ruin, a week from today. That is Sunday, the 19th of November. And uh, yeah, we're going to have a single faction, single elimination tournament for that new game. It's something I've had my eye on for a while, and the launch is coming up. So be sure to check out the details in the description down below, or I'll have a community post up as well. You can check out, um, that is, yeah, it's an Age of Sigmar RTS. It's more Warhammer, more strategy, and it looks promising. Uh, so definitely check that out when the time comes. For today, we're back in classic Total War Warhammer with Lizardmen versus Beastmen, and it is Nakai November, so Anti-Kaiju put in a replay with this, uh, yeah. Nakai, of course, one of his main benefits is... Uh, perfect Vigor AoE, this Golden Tribute also gives a little bit of damage resistance, definitely is better in longer games. Makes Nakai, like, okay in Domination, I don't know, I'm not up to speed on Lizardman meta in Domination, but it would seem like on paper having that Perfect Vigor uh, definitely does help, although that locks you out of taking a Life Slon, so you've got to heal via other means, like this Bastilladon Rev Crystal. We've also got in the air Skink Chief, uh, Skink Priest of Beasts, and some Cohort Javelins with Saurus Spears up front. Already clashing on the flanks is Chameleon Stalkers and Skink Cohort with the Beastmen uh, very quickly getting into combat here. We've got Centigors, Grape Shim, and Lower of Death on that side. Some uh, Ungor Spearman Herd. Um, this is Bujalicious playing the Beastmen. Regular submitter of replays, friend of the channel as well. Bloodbrute Behemoth. We've got a Doom Bull, Butchers of Kalkengard, and some Ungor Spearman Herd scattered around. So we'll keep a wide view as this... Big frontline engagement gets underway. The Saurus Spears will trade okay. They're not going to be spectacular here. Uh, definitely getting charged especially is going to hurt them a decent amount, but they'll be able to hold the line for some of this. The Chameleon Stalkers, though, taking some charges from the Centigors before they can really use their weapons to good effect. Going to take a lot of damage, but should be able to actually trade okay against the Centigor Centigors in return. Yeah, they've used up most of their ammunition there. Done some decent damage to the Centigors. I don't know. I feel like they could maybe use one more volley of their precursor weapons to really be super effective. But uh, Nakai's going to get in here in this big center brawl. And uh, he's definitely serviceable. He's not the best combatant in the world. And even Doom Bowl here, because of his contact effect, is arguably better. That is, of course, the dazed contact effect, which I believe the... The Sacred Croc scores also now have access to this, or at least the Regiment of Renown does. Um... The contact effect that honestly, if they wanted to buff Nakai, just giving Nakai dazed would be a great way to kind of buff up his power level and make him a significantly better character because dazed is just a very nice contact effect, debuffing that speed and melee defense. And we see it there on the Rev Crystal as it struggles to escape. Uh, yeah, the uh, Lizardmen just taking a lot of losses here, but let's see if they can rally. This Chameleon Stalkers, I mean, they. Kind of meant as a hybrid unit, but the problem is they have very low HP, so they tend to take a lot of damage very quickly and can't really hold up to actual dedicated melee units. But uh, yeah, Rev Crystal getting chased around a little bit here. Nakai getting some bops with his lollipop. Oh, apologies about that. My cat's just uh, getting around in the background there. Hopefully that wasn't too loud for you guys. Yeah, the uh, Lizardman again. It Winning out in some engagements here, starting to kind of stabilize a little bit. This is okay, fighting, you know, with the spear support. Nakai is able to get a little bit more damage in, but the healing of the Gorgon is such that he is going to take quite a bit longer to kill. But those Sora Spears, pretty hefty weapon strength, especially with the anti-large. 42 weapon strength overall, with 16 bonus versus large. That is 58 damage per hit, so it's a very meaty swing, but the problem is that... Nakai keeps getting knocked out of them, and then the Gorgon has the mass to just chase him around and continue targeting him. Got a Manticore summoned up on the Lizardman side, trying to go 2v1 single entity fight with the Rev Crystal, or at least save it momentarily from the vice grip of the Doom Bull. But the Butchers of Kalkengard are also kind of just free reign here, just marauding and smashing up units wherever they want. And in general, the Sora Spears are having a little bit of a hard time limiting them because of their lack of mobility. Lizardmen's also pretty well spread out right now. Could maybe get some of these units back in combat here, but trying to keep Nakai alive is the main focus of Lizardmen's micro at this point. Rev Crystal counteracting that Spear Leech, and again, just trying to run from the Blood Brute Behemoth as much as possible. Just soak him through the uh, Saurus Spears. 
But, again, Nakai having a little bit of a hard time actually doing that. We're going to see a nasty fate of Yuna come down here and just wreck this unit of Sora's Spears as Nakai tries to screen and gets chased through. And the Butchers of Calvin Guard are going to come collapse from the rear and try and get quick terror out there, see if they can start to roll up some of these spear units. King Chief plinking away from the air is really not doing a lot of damage. I don't know, is he targeting the Gorgon? Yeah, arguably a targeting mistake. I mean, granted, the... Uh, Ray Shaman does have some armor on his chariots. The shooting attack of the Skink Chief isn't going to do a terrible amount of damage to him, but over time, it will wear him down. And the fact that he can't heal, whereas the Gorgon can, like, I understand he's dedicating as much resources as possible to try to kill the Gorgon, but I don't know. It's possible you might have been able to snipe the Ray Shaman by now if he had been focusing solely on him the entire battle, or at least, you know, lower his leadership enough that you could maybe charge in and route him off, but. Those Fate of Unas and Spirit Leeches have been devastating. It's nice to see someone not take Lore Wild and essentially take two spells instead of one spell Lore, which is <laughs> basically what Death and Lore of Wild are, right? It's do you want to point click single entity and point click multi entity separately, or do you just want one spell to point and click? And that's really where we're at. Block of Doom also exists, I guess, too, which is, uh, you know, more for dedicated blobs, but really, Lore Beast doesn't have a good single target option, which makes it uh, arguably inferior to Death, and of course, Wild probably still being the best. Nice to see Lore of Death and put to good use here. Spirit Leech there is probably going to finish Nakai off, especially with the Butchers of the Calcan Guard and the Blood Brute Behemoth closing, and the uh, Lizardmen are quickly starting to lose hope. The Doom Bull taking a lot of damage. Again, Lizardmen were able to trade reasonably well. It's just not quite enough, and again, I think Maybe if you'd been able to somehow snipe that Deathcaster a little bit early on, just save some of the damage on the Kai and on the Soros Spears. Maybe he has a little bit more left to give, but it's, it'd be tough regardless to kill the Butchers of Kalkingard and the Bloodbrute Behemoth without some serious dedicated anti-monster units. Even then, like something like a Red Saurian, for example, I don't know if that's going to trade wildly cost-effectively here. The Kai goes down, though. And the last little Skink Bros are going to try and hold out, but Skink Priest is more than out of his element here. He's going to get taken out, and the Chief up in the sky probably paid for himself. Yeah, actually, not maybe not quite. I think, what are they, like 700, 750 up in the air? I'll have to double check that, but uh, yeah, unfortunately, was not able to snipe the caster in time. Does look like the sniper eventually gets... <laughs> the sniper, yes, the caster eventually gets sniped, who's also doing some sniping himself, of course. The Spirit Leech and the, the Sora Spears definitely make sense, like the Mass Sora Spears. But uh, Nakai, unfortunately, just a little bit of a letdown here. And again, I think there's some things you could do to make him better. We'll talk a little bit more about that here at the end. But the Day's Contact effect is really the biggest one for me. Maybe give him magic damage as well. Just some, some things to help him stand out in certain matchups where he's expected to maybe act as the brawler that he is. I mean, you could just straight up increase his weapon strength up to, like, you know, 580, but might be a little bit too much. I don't know. Single entity weapon strength right now is in a really weird place because a lot of the game 1 and game 2 single entities, which were originally balanced around large, um, are not updated for game 3, and it's causing some problems, although some of them are, like, giants. But uh, across the board, I think... Oh, whoops, got to check the values. Maybe I'll splice in a little card right here talking about them. Anyway, uh, single entities, back to it. Uh, the single entity weapon strength issue. Single entities across the board. I recently submitted some direct feedback to CA about this, uh, especially in terms of monsters, but in terms of characters as well. A lot of the Game 1 and Game 2 stuff needs to be reevaluated. I think, especially if it's supposed to be like a data dedicated melee combatant. Um, as Nakai is. So if we can just take a look at his stats here. I mean, other than his abilities, doesn't really have a lot going on for him innately. He's just like a decent combatant. But even then, 40 melee defense is really not great. So maybe like a plus 5 melee defense. And then in addition, maybe give him the dazed contact effect. So I believe, yeah, so the Regiment of Renown has it. Regular ones do not. But I still think, I mean, he's a big brawler. Probably... It makes sense for him to have dazing attacks, right? If we take a look at the Beastman's... Uh, Torox has flaming damage and just much better stats overall. Yeah, the melee defense in particular is is better, although he does have technically, I guess, less weapon strength. 
and uh, a little bit more charge bonus. They are quite comparable in many ways, but uh, lacking that contact effect or, you know, I think, like, if we take a look here, obviously Doombolt does have the contact effect and also significantly cheaper as a base cost, which I mean, these two are also quite comparable, and the Kai arguably a little bit better in a few key areas, but that contact effect makes up for a lot. Especially, I mean, it's basically like an extra plus 10 melee attack, right? Plus the speed debuff, which is quite impactful, so uh, no pun intended, but... <laughs> You see what I'm talking about. I do think uh, it's an easy thing they could do for Nakai to kind of buff him up a little bit more and make him finally perhaps meta. It's hard to say. Uh, it's definitely an interesting one, you guys. If you have any Nakai replays, feel free to shoot those over to me or just replays in general. Of course, I'm always happy to receive and watch. Can't guarantee that I'll cast them, but I do appreciate those of you, especially these days, who are sending them in. Big thanks to you guys who are doing so and all of you who are currently still watching. Thank you so much. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't. We'll see you next time.